G'day guys and welcome back to another episode. This time we are in Ballarat and we're going to start this one off by going to check out the Sovereign Hill Historical Park. So Sovereign Hill is a township they've built to be set up exactly like it was in the 1850s during the gold rush. It's so cool. And it's live action so there's people walking around all dressed up, uh, speaking how they did, playing music and Oh, we've only just come in and it is so cool. It's way bigger than I thought and yep. it's it's just been done so well. So it we'll was take you. Yeah, it was $100 for a family ticket and it's totally worth it. Yep, <laughs> yep. So we'll take you around, we'll show you a bit of the place. It's gonna be cool. Got your sample lollies. How is it? Really Have you tried good. one? Let's go. And what he said, don't chew it or break the teeth. Come here. Come here. Oh, that's the way. Come on. Come here. Come here. I need you to hold on to that for me. There we go. Thank you. It's all right. You can go back now. I'll call on you later. Thank you. Excuse me, Digger. Do you have a license there? Yes. 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 No. No. Oh, do you have five pounds for the fine? <laughs> no? What, what are you going to do? What should she do? Run! Run, run. run thank you! <laughs> so, this is where we come to my first piece of equipment. This is what I call my small child attitude adjuster. Ooh. Parents, if you need one, see me afterwards. But it is also known as a truncheon. Now, this is a, made from a very hard but very light wood. Perfect! For giving somebody a wrap around the back of the head. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will warn you, I'm going to fire this gun. The noise emanating from the gun will be rather voluminous in nature, so it's recommended that you take your digits and place them firmly in your auricular orifices. Put your fingers in your ears, it's going to be loud. We've got small children, please make sure they've got their fingers in their ears. All right, ladies and gentlemen, firing the weapon. Weapon is off. Firing in three, two, one. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we learn to fly to Van Moskis. Thank you very much.
cool. That was like bowling in Fred Flintstone times. Sovereign Hill, I highly rate that place. Yeah, that was an awesome day out. Kids absolutely loved it. You had a good time, kids? Yeah. And because it wasn't super busy, the kids probably got to do a lot of things that they would never have got to do otherwise. Yeah, real lucky. They said uh, they do a lot of school tours and stuff there, so that starts from tomorrow. So they were saying today's the last quiet day. Uh, so we got really lucky there. If you're gonna go, take the whole day. There yeah. is so much to see and plan out your day. They've got a few uh, timetables up around the place, but it, it's quite hard to follow. So write down a few things or take a photo and plan your day out because there's tours and, and uh, shows happening the whole day. All the time, yeah, heaps of stuff to see and be a part of. So yeah, it was really good. Highly recommend. Pack a lunch. Yeah, uh, pack a lunch. <laughs> we didn't, we weren't too sure. We just thought, oh, we'll get something cheap and easy there but no it's like a theme park it was, yeah. food is expensive not cheap <laughs> but no overall uh great day out yeah you could definitely go there if you packed food without spending more money because all the other kind of tickets like tours and stuff it's all pretty much free within it yeah there are things that you can pay for to do but we really honestly didn't have time to do yeah. any of that stuff so um it was yeah really worth uh, 99 dollars for the family ticket all right guys, so we've just come into the small town of Haddon. It's about 15 k's out of Ballarat and Ballarat is the township that we want to go visit and do all the things. But we're trying to start to cut down our, our uh, living costs. So we're in a low cost camp, it's 10 bucks a night donation and it's run by the local Lions Club. It's just a open field but there's a really nice playground there and there's a skate park out the front, which is awesome for the kids. So they've got some toilets here. They, they look all right, they're clean enough, but there's a tap out the back. So we came here empty. So we're just filling up the tanks now. And there's only two other people here. So we'll go get set up and I'll show you this little area that they've got. It's pretty tidy for 10 bucks a night. So while I've got my hoses and the filter out too, I'm going to fill up the water bladder in the back of the Ranger. So we've got a 60 litre uh, FlexiMate water bladder and I've just rigged it up with a couple of fittings at the back there so it makes it nice and easy. And then I've just got a little 12 volt transfer pump that I bought off them and just rigged it up to an Anderson plug and just um, put some fittings on it so that we can transfer it from the bladder into the caravan. So I'll do that now just so that when we do want it in two nights time or whatever, it's just nice and easy, the car's already there full. So easy transfer and then we'll be topped up again. And I should also mention, there are heaps of bins here, all clean wheelie bins, so they must get empty quite often. And just across the road there is a general store slash servo kind of thing. Uh, they do a bit of food, a couple of nights a week, I think, but yeah, enough that if you need to just run out and grab something, it's right there. Just having a bit of a walk around the city of Ballarat because this place is bloody amazing. So cool. I don't know what it is with us and old buildings, but this place is just incredible. 
just we just had to we drove past it yesterday and we decided we had to come past and just have another look today have a bit of a walk around it's like melbourne on steroids yeah it's like not as modernized as melbourne yeah yeah, yeah. well preserved i mean obviously a lot of modern stuff around but wow just incredible The architecture around here is just absolutely blowing us away. I know, it's all so detailed and all built in like the 1850s to 18 kind of 90s. How, yeah. how they did this kind of work back then, just... Yeah, I, I, don't just, know. I just don't understand they, it. <laughs> with nothing, like with no power or anything, and it's all massive stone. But and even when you look at like the steam engines and all the stuff that we saw yesterday, like... Just incredible, all the stuff built to last and... I don't know, the knowledge and stuff. It seems like such a long time ago, but it... Well, that's the thing, they built it to last then, mm. not like now. But it's amazing, I'm, we're just loving just walking around, just looking at these buildings. Yeah, I don't know if the kids are so much. Well, they got gelato, so they're sweet. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever, parents. <laughs> but anyway, that's enough looking at buildings. Uh, we better get a move on. See some other stuff. Yeah, I don't know, brewery? Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. <laughs> Righto, so we've had a look online and we've decided Dollar Bill Brewing here in Ballarat. I keep going to call it Bendigo. <laughs> Ballarat, too many B names. <laughs> Dollar Bill Brewing, we're gonna go have a look at that. Should be good, hopefully it's open. It doesn't say on their website. But, yeah, uh, hopefully we don't drive there and it's not open. Yeah, it's not too far out of town anyway, so we'll go check it out. And then there's a few other breweries if that doesn't work out, but let's go out there and have a bit of a look. So no, we're not going to $1 Brewing. <laughs> it's uh, a bit of a shed in the sort of uh, outskirts of Ballarat and there's no signs, nothing's open, there's no opening hours on the website, so it's all closed up. So we're going to go to another brewery in Ballarat, which is closer to where we're staying anyway, called Red Duck Brewing. That Hope. says it's open. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it is. <laughs> That's one thing we're finding. Because we love our craft beer and going to little breweries, in a lot of these towns, they're not open say Monday through Thursday mm. and they're only open Friday Saturday Sunday some even less than that so we get to a lot of places there's a brewery we want to go to but we're just there the wrong time of the week yeah. but hey what do you do we just got to get to the ones that we can and we definitely will <laughs> <laughs> Big thank you to Red Duck Brewing for having us. Yes, that was uh, awesome. Bit of a personalised one-off yeah. greeting with them because we were the only ones there. Greeting? Who are you? I don't know. Let's start <laughs> with that again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Red Duck Brewing. No, what am I doing? <laughs> so, so I've just been... <laughs> Right, so we've just been to Red Duck Brewing. It was awesome. Um, cool little vibe in the place, and she was really lovely, the lady that served us. She really personal touch. Really that, good beers. That sounded odd. <laughs> Get out of there, what are we doing? Do we even know how to YouTube? Probably not. <laughs> Thanks for having us, Red Duck Brewing. Uh, that joint is... Okay. Let's do this. We, we've got it. Okay. That was Red Duck Brewing. Uh, great little brewery. We got some takeaways. Yep. Beers they had on tap there were amazing. All so easy to drink, mm. like too easy to drink. They didn't have all their <laughs> beers on tap, so we got the ones that they didn't have on tap as takeaways. So mm. we'll try those later. Yep. But uh, we got the tip from a couple of our subscribers to come out to Nimmin's Bridge. 
which is roughly 20 minutes drive from where we're staying at Haddon, near yep. Smithsdale. Smithsdale. Yeah. I don't know how to say it, but Sorry. it's got a Y in it, so that's why I'm confused. Uh, but this is a historic bridge from the railway sort of trail, they call yeah, it, don't they? they? what do they call it? Skipton, Skipton Ballarat, Skipton Rail, rail Trail. Go, there. go we in the bush, mate. Just there. Jesus. Sorry, kids and weeing. I'm sure you can relate. So we looked up this bridge because we, we kind of try to research anything before we go check it out. We're, we are really limited on time. You know, even though we're staying here three nights, by the time you've done a few other things, you, you run out of time so quickly. And now that we're like doing homeschooling. Yeah, the so the mornings are, really... are ruled out with schooling. It really eats into our time. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it looks amazing. A massive bridge. Um, so you know we're gonna... this is going to be on YouTube, right? Huh? You know this is going to be on YouTube, right? Wow. So anyway. <laughs> Where were we? God, we were going so Jesus good. Christ. Nimmin's Bridge. It's a bridge. <laughs> So guys, this is Nimmin's Bridge, built in 1889. Would you believe it? You probably would because it's a full timber bridge. <laughs> but it is amazing. We just walked up the top. We've now come down the bottom to have a look. And from down here, quite spectacular. Uh, it was a rail bridge, no longer has the rails on it. I'm not, I sure, I'm not sure where the railway line Yeah, we, we can't find any history on that. I'm sure someone could tell us, but I think the whole, this is called the rail trail, so I think the whole railway line is gone now. Yeah, we'll have to do some more research and yeah. we'll maybe voice over or something. What but we a very impressive sign. Yes. So I think the it fourth was the biggest. Fo the fourth tallest um, built. And Timber. The third tallest still remaining. Yeah. From what I've read. Timber trestle bridge is wrong, what it's I'll called. Correct it. But yeah. To it. And they're saying it's one of the like most impressive timber trussel structures in Victoria, still standing. So I'm impressed. It's pretty amazing. Mm. Love seeing stuff like this. It's amazing. Righto. So you would have seen in one of the last couple of episodes that we defrosted the fridge when we got back to the van and pulled out chunks of ice, yay thick. So this has been an ongoing problem since we've got the van. Didn't really know if it was just this fridge or you know the the climate that we're in but um it started frosting up again straight away within about a week we had probably 10 mil of ice along the back of it so then move forward a couple of days later we meet up with uh some new friends eight feet maker memories in bendigo bendigo yeah. and uh he has the same fridge and said never had a build up in it you know it seems very strange so anyway he helps us out. We end up doing the paper test where you get a bit of paper and you go around your seal and you close the door on it and you just check that it's got a bit of drag. If it's got a bit of drag on it, you know that your seal's good. Anyway, we get around to this bottom corner and there is no drag at all. In fact, there is a five mil gap in the seal itself. So just down here, you probably can't see it, but that won't spring back out. So it's nice and spongy there and that's just pretty much stuck in. So that's why we were getting such a build-up. It was drawing in all that humidity and just kept building up ice. So I pulled that out a little bit and even went to Bunnings and got a bit of uh, foam, stuck that on it, and we already do not have ice building up. It's draining away, perfect. Next problem, rang 
Tetford to try to sort it all out. They said I have to go straight to an authorised service agent. They are all booked out for months around this area. Um, down in Victoria, we're near Melbourne now. And we just can't get in anywhere. I'm even trying to work ahead two months ahead of us. No one could get us in. So anyway, spoke to Tetford again. Uh, just explained our situation and they've been great and we're going to go into the factory now so They're going to try to fix the seal that's on it, but worst case scenario you can't replace the seal itself So it'll be a whole new door, but um We've got to head into Melbourne now, which we weren't going to so we're going to do a little bit of a detour go into Melbourne And then we're off to Geelong uh, a bit out of a way, but you know well worth it if we can have our fridge working again Well, we've just been into Tetford and they had it sorted in about 10 minutes flat. Uh, so massive thanks to John and Kat for helping us out. They don't normally have people coming into their factory there to get uh, warranty work done. But like I said, I just explained to them our situation and um, they were really good about it. We just said, you know, we're on the road full time and we're trying to book in advance and there's no one could fit us in. So. Yeah, once again, massive thank you to them. And turns out all it was that they needed to do was an adjustment of the bottom hinge. They just had to get it in a bit. And then also, once it pushed in a bit, move the hinge over as well so it lifted our latch back up. Otherwise, the door would have been sitting on an angle. Now, it's probably something I could have done myself. But at the stage, I thought it was a replacement of the seal. But I'm um, happy to have come in and let them do it anyway, being so new and under warranty. So we're just pulled over now in the industrial state. We're just going to have a bit of lunch. Toby's making us all sangers, aren't you, Tobes? Yeah, no, he's gone mute all of a sudden. <laughs> it's, the, it's, the first. <laughs> <laughs> it's the quietest he's ever been in his life. Anyway, we'll have some lunch and then we are hitting the road towards Geelong. We were going to Torquay, but there is a festival on, or concert this weekend apparently, and every single place is booked out. So, closest we can get in was Geelong. But that's alright. An en suite, an en suite powered site. That's right, we're having our very first en suite site. Uh, not because we need it, because it was the only one they had left. Yeah, so. pretty much, we had to take what we could get. Oh, well, we may as well have a shower in it and, yeah. Whatever. I'm actually a bit excited to have a real shower. Oh, okay. No. Well, there you go. Anyway, let's have some lunch and get moving. Well, that wraps up another episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying this kind of content and you want to follow us and you haven't done already, make sure you like and subscribe. Click on that notification bell. It'll tell you when we have a new video out each and every week. If you're interested in any of our merchandise, jump over to our website. You'll be able to purchase it from there. Everything that you buy helps us out and we donate 10% of everything that we make to the Cancer Council. If you have any feedback or questions, make sure you drop them in the comments below and we'll see you guys next week. See you guys.